Everybody, welcome. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Psychic and the Doc. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. I'm Dr. Pat, and I'm right here with my buddy, Psychic, the most amazing psychic lawyer, and much more, Mark Anthony. Hello, Mark. Hey, Dr. Pat. It's good to see you. And I understand you are still East Coast bound, but yes. I understand. Um, I, you know, I have a good feeling that things are going to be uh, opening up. So you'll be back in uh, Seattle rocking and rolling in no time. And, you know, we got a great show tonight because what a lot of people don't realize, but everybody also knows is today is actually the last day of the Christmas season. January 6th is the epiphany. And in the uh, and to all our Latino brothers and sisters, it's Three Kings Day. And this is the celebration of when the three wise men uh, came to visit the, the infant Jesus. And this is the 12th day of Christmas, because there's 12 days between Christmas Day and today. So this is it. And like Dr. Pat and I promised, the psychic and the doc have been on call every Thursday during the holiday season. Now, we're going to be on call, of course, for the rest of the year, but uh, we are ending, officially ending the holiday season today, and we are here. And, you know, one of the things I love about this is that we are in this place where every one of us is having epiphanies about something. And epiphany itself has a story. Um, and the story that I'm talking about, and we'll share part of that story is how the word has grown, you know, not just in its meaning, but in its meaningfulness, if you understand what I mean. And we use that term, uh, some people, some people say aha moments. Uh, some people say I had a wake up call today. Uh, if you're me, you're saying I had a shake up call today. Uh, all of the above. But in the end, um, this is the time to start to reflect on this. Because when we're looking at um, who we are, what we want to become, it is beyond the time of just second guessing ourselves. We need to help people and encourage people to step into their full potential. And epiphanies tap in to, like my friend Mita Johnson would say, personal wisdom oh, i like that personal wisdom that's her that's her thing she is the expert in personal wisdom and when you have an epiphany how often mark maybe not you i'm not saying this is you 
it's but it could be. Rocky. It could be. <laughs> probably Rocky or Linda, but it's not you. Um, how often do you have an epiphany? And for whatever reason, it either dissipates, dissolves, or goes into the nothingness because we're not able to do anything with it. What do you think about that? That's interesting. And it's also very true um, because um, you know, come, uh, you know, I, I've done things um, where I got insights on something. And yes, I had the insight, but just because I had that insight didn't mean I could influence anything else about it. Um, I, you know, epiphanies when, you know, I'm, I'm a writer, you're a writer as well. Uh, and writers get a lot of epiphanies. And the problem is I'm laughing because you got to have a piece of paper with you or your phone where you can say it. Cause people, you get the, an epiphany and then, you, then I'll say, Oh, I'll remember that later. And then you sit down and it's like, what was that? And so what Dr. Pat brought up is a very important point. Epiphanies are personal wisdom, and these pearls of wisdom come from within, or perhaps they're transmitted from without. And when this happens, you've got to seize that and make sure you remember it, um, yeah. because you don't want it slipping through your fingers. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this. Have you ever been there, Mark? I mean, have you ever been at this place? I and, mean... And then- when we think about this sixth day, this, you know, January 6th, that has very special meaning, especially yeah. in, you know, it's a Christian feast day. Yes. So that's important to, to mention that. Um, uh, and, and it also has other meaning. The word epiphany has many, many meanings. And, you know, if you read stories, whether you're reading the Bhagavad Gita, whether you're reading the knowledge book um, that uh, Marge Patasik works from, uh, or whether you're my friend, uh, Doc Martin, the street, uh, the straight talking shaman, right? She's going to be on the show. Um, whether you're her or you're somebody else, we're living in this world where we honor the rituals of this. Now, talk a little bit about what your view of this epiphany holiday is from where you sit. Well, to me, this is one of the most complex holidays during the Christ, uh, Christian uh, observance of Christmas. And in fact, I, I give a very in-depth lecture about, about um, sacred astrology and what the Star of Bethlehem really was. And for me, um, based on studies done by the head of astrophysics at both Rutgers and Notre Dame University, they, they found, and this is an epiphany, okay, the, um, there is a, an astrophysicist, Michael Molnar, and his hobby is collecting ancient coins, and he found this ancient Roman coin of a ram looking at a star, and he realized that this was a commemorative event because in, in the ancient world, the ram, which is Aries, the constellation Aries symbolized Judea. And it was looking at a star, which must have meant there was some type of alignment within Aries. And I remember when I was reading this, I looked at the other side of the coin and it was the god Jupiter. And then it dawned on me, as it dawned on, on Professor Molnar, that Jupiter is the star of kings. So what he did, and his findings were, were peer-reviewed and verified by Notre Dame, uh, Professor Grant Matthews, they developed a computer program to recreate the position of the stars sometime around, you know, 1 AD. Long wow. story short. Wow. They found an astrological alignment of the sun, the moon, Jupiter, and Saturn within the constellation Aries. Okay, Jupiter is the star of kings. Here's this uh, um, alignment, and it gets even better. There was a lunar eclipse of Jupiter at the precise moment of the alignment. Wow. Then they found that... Mars, Mercury, and Venus were also in alignment, 
And this particular alignment has only ever happened once and will only ever have happened once. It'll never happen again. Wow. Okay. And so the Magi, the so-called three kings, they weren't kings. Uh, they were astronomers from the court of Persia. They observed this. And that's what, according to legend, prompted them to go to meet this new king. And it gets even better because the lunar eclipse of Jupiter, Jupiter meant a king was going to be born. The lunar eclipse meant one with divine nature. Okay, so I don't want to get all, all religious here, but I'm just you know recanting the research uh, that I've done. Um, and, and the reason I say this, Dr. Pat, is, you know, when we think of the Star of Bethlehem, we think of this Steven Spielberg-esque spotlight on a manger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it had been, don't yeah. you think, don't you think evil King Herod would have noticed that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Let, let me think for a minute. Uh, let me, well, okay. Without social media, I'm not so sure. So. <laughs> but the thing is though, uh, if Herod would have had a spotlight on a manger, he would have gone and, and had uh, this exactly. would be rival to his throne. And instead he said, well, go, go find go find this child, then report yeah. back to me, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of like, I always think of Herod as the original Grinch, you know? It's kind of like, <laughs> go find the child. <laughs> this creepy yeah, old really guy. You know? Well, Mark, I think maybe you're like <laughs> maybe a reincarnate. But, you know, so here's what I love about this. And, you know, I was reading, I was reading a couple of my astrologer friends and what they're writing. Uh, they're basically saying, look, this is an Eastern Orthodox church kind of thing. However, I love when they do the however. However, you know, it is the day of three wise men. However, yes. I love, however, however, if you don't want to take a reference to Christianity, it's a holiday that honors and recognizes the magic and yes. the wonder of wisdom. Hello. Beautiful. Yes. And, you know, and that in and of itself, and that's an epiphany. And see, that's why, <laughs> well, you know, we look at the, these, these dates and, and these holidays and these observances, and that astrological alignment occurred on April 17th of 6 BC. Okay. Now people say, but no, Jesus was born on December 25th. It's like, no, there's no reference in scripture to when Jesus was born. It's just that the Romans used to celebrate a festival of the sun um, on December 25th, Sol Invictus, because they were afraid days were getting darker, winter comes, people starve to death. So the Romans in Roman fashion had a big drunken festival and orgy and party to, you know, it was like a last bash before, before winter set in. And so when Christianity came through in the year 350 AD, um, Pope Julius I replaced Saul Invictus with the birth of Christ to symbolize the light coming to the world. Now, building on what you're saying, an epiphany is seeing the light. The word yeah. enlightenment is all of a sudden you got it. You've seen the light. And so that's why whether or not you're Christian or Jewish or Hindu or whatever, all religions have a festival of light. I mean, Hanukkah is a festival of light. Diwali in the Hindu religion is a festival of light. The Muslims celebrate light. Light symbolizes purity, knowledge, the divine, creativity, healing. And so to have a day, uh, which is January 6th, to celebrate wisdom, which is enlightenment, I think this is a, a very, very important day. It is. And then the Sunday that's referenced here, I just want to say this, let's go to break and then we'll come back and we'll go right to the phones. The Sunday that we're referencing here is, is usually a Sunday associated with it. And it's January 9th of 2022. Um, we, we have an Epiphany Sunday. So that's the other thing we created. So it's not okay just to have an Epiphany like the day. So we, we're also going to have an Epiphany Sunday. But the point is this, we're taking your calls and we're going to work with you today. Um, the bottom line is this, what are the epiphanies that you have had and what do you want to have? We're going to go to a short break. When we come back right to the phones, you're listening to The Psychic and the Doc with me, Dr. Pat. I love applied psychology. And when we come back, we'll also be talking with the most incredible psychic medium, psychic lawyer, Mark Anthony. We'll be right back.
Hey, everybody, welcome back. It's so great to have all of you tune us in, turn us on. You're listening to The Psychic and the Doc. And as I said before, we are going to go right to the phones. And I do have a question that did come in that's very relevant to what we're doing right now. Um, and, and let's just say, Mark, uh, first off, how do people find out about you? How do they get your book? How do they do all of the above? Let's just tell folks the best way for them to do that. Super. Um, visit my website, which is afterlifefrequency.com, which is just like my my uh, new book, Afterlife Frequency. And so if you go to afterlifefrequency.com, I invite all of you to sign up for my newsletter because that'll keep you up to date on upcoming guests and shows with the psychic and the doc. And at afterlifefrequency.com, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one reading. So I'll have the time to spend with you. And you can also order my book. So um, I look forward to, to mm -hmm. seeing more of you signing up for the newsletter. And Dr. Pat, I think we're about ready to go to the phones. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, we got Jacob back. Thank you, <clears throat> Jacob, for coming back. Okay, hey. so it's great to have you, Jacob. I know you had a, a great trip, and uh, but it's also great to have you back at the helm. Thank you. Not that we, we, we didn't mind Jessica. That was <laughs> we, okay, too. We love okay. Jessica, but, yeah. you know, Jacob, yeah. you're back. Of yeah, course, back. and it's great to be back. <laughs> Yeah, cool. <laughs> great. Well, we've got It'll Wendy be great on the line. when I get back, too. <laughs> we've got Wendy from Pennsylvania. All right, let's go, Jacob. Thank you. Wendy, welcome to the show. Hi, you both. Thank you for your talk shows every week. You're welcome. It's great to meet you. Just making sure you can hear me because the doc is very, very quiet, but I can hear Mark like loud I, as anything. I can oh. hear you so well. I love it. Yeah, you're coming through very yeah, nice and clear. A beautiful, deep voice, too. I love that. I hope you I guys had a wonderful Christmas. You know, I actually did. Not the easiest Christmas, but still a wonderful one. How can we help you today? I was just wondering if I could get a reading by Mark. Sure. Okay, Wendy, let me see. I'm picking up on a female energy coming through, connected to you through your mother's side of the family. Now, she could be a mother, but it feels more like a grandmotherly figure is what I'm getting um, uh, from her. And, um, ow. Okay, when I'm saying ow, what I'm getting is the sharp pain in my head. Now, when I experience these, it's because spirits are transmitting sensations to me, and that's how they um, give me pieces of information. The sharp pain in the head indicates to me, and the way I'm feeling it, I feel like my face is drooping and I'm getting um, numbness throughout my body. This would indicate that this woman had neurological issues, very possibly a history of strokes. And it seemed like there was more than one. There seemed to be a series of strokes and it took her down, took her down um, over time. And I feel that there was some issues with her ability to ambulate, to walk. She may have been using a walker because I'm seeing, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm using a walker. And, um, and then toward the end, it just her body felt so heavy on her. Like she felt very uncomfortable in her body. And when she did pass, she was ready to go. And she was um, elderly. And by elderly, um, the appearance that I'm getting with her could be middle 80s to her early 90s, like 80, like 85, maybe to 92 um, is what I'm getting with her. And um, yeah, she had, uh, yeah, she still had a, a good, good head of hair on her. Um, um, it, was, it was white um, and she had kind of a medium complexion, not super pale, not, not uh, real dark. Does any of this make sense to you, Wendy? Do you recognize this? Yeah. At first okay. though, I thought you were talking about mother, but then when you said the older and the eighties, my grandmother, so. Was that about your mom's mom? Yes. Okay. I lost both of those with matter of weeks from each other. Okay. Well, the spirits come in in tandem because we got this woman. Did your mom, was she a brunette? Did she a um, brunette or did she like yeah. color her hair in the browns? Okay. So we got grandma, we got your mom yeah. 
And, and I'm not one of these psychics that throws out butterflies and bunnies, but man, your mom is just pelting me with butterflies, okay? So, and this doesn't always mean the actual creature. It could be maybe a pattern, maybe like a, 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 some type of fabric with butterflies, but is there something about butterflies or a pattern with butterflies in it that resonates with you in any way? Yes, I've got butterfly tattoos, so. Uh, that'll do it, okay. Mom. Fantastic. So we got your mother and your grandmother here. And this is so funny. Um, I get songs and and I'm hearing I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna what was that? Dr. Pat, what was that from? Was that that was some musical or something, wasn't it? Oh, we can't hear you, no, Dr. Pat. That You're that muted. Still... Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, Wendy. Go that's ahead. That's the shampoo commercial, wasn't it? It was, but it was, it was a shampoo commercial. Absolutely right. But it was also, I think what they called a ditty. And I think it did come, I, I want to say Broadway, but I am not a Broadway It, it came from person. South Pacific. The yeah, play, something South like Pacific. that. Right, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay, so Wendy, um, that could indicate maybe your mom had difficulty with men or maybe you are having difficulty right now with men. Does that make any sense to you? One hundred percent. I totally picked. The, I picked the wrong man. I mean, it, it's like I got a sign on me. If you have any issues, come at me, and I will give you my heart, and you can break it and do everything. Oh and boy, it's one is every. Ooh, it's been like that. Mm. Well, yeah. um, it's interesting that that mm. the the theme of the show is epiphany, and and yeah. and because what I'm getting from your mom and your grandmother, they're working in tandem, is that you finally gotten to the point in your life where you have stopped selling yourself short, and you have stopped compromising. In other words, you know that you're worthy of a good relationship. That's what I'm getting. Dr. Pat, what, what's yeah. your take on this? Yeah, I, 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 can I just say three, three things to you? Because you just did your own self-discovery today. And I think you just had your own epiphany today. Um, this now, as you move into this next year, the epiphany is you're not a doormat. Right? You know what I'm saying here? Can, yeah, can you're you right. feel me? Okay. And but do you have to say, I am not a doormat in 2022. It's not about you. And I'm not a doormat. Yeah, I'm getting there. I have better days and then I have the worst days. But yeah. Uh, no, I just want there. you to try to say it now. No, I, look, I don't even ask you to get there. I just want to hear you say it. I am not a doormat. Oh boy, say it like that. you mean it, Wendy. Say it like that. you mean it, Wendy. I love that. I am not a doormat 100%, <laughs> she said. I am not a doormat. There you go. <laughs> okay. And let me just explain this yeah, epiphany to you uh, so you understand it completely. I meant that it was a 100%. Yeah, you did say 100%. I have good day. Yeah, but, but I'm going to make every day good. See, I get in a lot of trouble from all my new thought friends who say, why are you telling people to say like a negative thing? Like, why don't you give them something? Pop? No, I am not a doormat. It's a double negative. And I don't care if it's a double negative because you're declaring you want to stop the behavior before you can say, look, in order for anybody to lose any weight, you got to stop something, right? Before... It's great yeah. if you bring in all the green salad and all the tomatoes and all of that, but you got to stop eating a half a chocolate cake, right? And I don't really know yeah. a high consciousness way to say to somebody, stop eating a half a chocolate cake. So what I want you to just say for the next 70 days, 70 times a day, and I want you to count it, I am not a doormat. That's creepy that you mentioned the, the weight loss and eating right because that's exactly what I'm going through, too. But so, remember what I said. I know. But I, I'm encouraging you to change one thing. You notice I'm telling you one thing. Walk around 70 times a day, 70 days. I am not a doormat. Now, let's take the little diet, and then I'll let you go. I just want you to stop one thing. Stop one thing that you know is not helping you on 
your body, right? That's not helping on you on that massively amazing body that you already have and just want to get better, right? So just stop something. Can you understand? Okay, Wendy, yeah. you got I, that? I do. I understand all that. And I'm a very strong person mentally. And, you know, I get through life with all the... I've had a horrible life as far as things happening to me that shouldn't have happened. But, um, you know, I get through it. But I always wonder in the back of my head why. That question oh, why oh, does somebody no. go Okay, through? great. I'm going to help you. I'm sorry, Mark. I got to help. No, no, go ahead. Oh, and when I was laughing, it wasn't yeah. at what Wendy was saying. It was what was going on in the background. Oh, the little the dog Dr. Pat, in. a dog yeah, came dog. running in. But, yeah. but uh, Wendy, we're listening to you. Go right ahead. Wendy, I'm going to help you with this one last thing. Okay. Are you, are you ready? Yeah. I know I'm going to get the emails on this. I, hi, honey. I absolutely find the word why, especially when you're in the middle of a crisis, to be one of the more destructive words and energies you can bring in. Because 95% of the people that ask why in those situations actually, they, they just, they don't want to know why. They want to know more about how. They want, they, you know what I'm saying? Because when you say why, what's on the other end of that is why me? Do you see what I'm saying, Wendy? Yeah. And we well, got to shift mean, that. We have to, sh no, no, no. We have to shift that because you're a strong woman and you're not a victim. Strong woman. You know, you and I share this in common. You understand? I, my yeah, mom committed suicide. Yeah, my mom committed suicide when I was six. I was homeless at 17. And at 19, I was arrested for something I didn't do. But you will never hear me say, why me? Because what I learned from all of that has helped me be able to help you today. So can, you, can we just I let you go to. with one thing to do? That's all. For, don't worry about the whys. Just let's do this one thing, right? I am not a doormat 70 times a day for 70 days. And then just stop doing one behavioral thing you do with food that you know you really don't want to do. You see how simple it is? One and one. Like, that's two. So I lied. I said one thing. Okay, two things. You got it, Wendy? I do. Hey, Mark. Yes. When you mentioned the butterflies with my mom, was there anything else with that? Well, the thing is, when a message is presented, what I think doesn't matter, it's what that means to you. So when you see a butterfly, yes, you have a butterfly tattoo, but I, I, I have a feeling that the butterfly tattoo has symbolic meaning for you. So that is yeah. underscoring that symbolic meaning. And also that your mother, there is an awareness uh, of, uh, from her spirit that you have these tattoos and what that symbolic meaning is to you. I mean, to me, what I think is one thing, what you think is another. For me, a butterfly is symbolic of, of going from a body, a cocoon, a caterpillar, and transforming into a spirit. That's my um, association with the symbolism of a butterfly. Other people look at butterflies as symbolic of spiritual entities like, like fairies and angels and, and that. Does this make any sense to you or what is your association with butterflies? Yeah, my meaning is the reborn of life after going to difficult time and refusing to go back to having more of those. Exactly. Why be a caterpillar? when you can be a butterfly yeah exactly you gotta grow up and grow somehow eventually or keep well, on growing in one of the two exactly and and um dr pat has explained this many times so um we grow in response to adversity right dr pat oh dr pat's muted again I think the why, though, what well, for me is like, why so many deaths? Why so many loss? Only a per 
I've never seen somebody lose as much people as I have in such tragic ways and still well, be able to go on and not ask. Yeah. But, and I'll, I'll tell you what, let me just say this because we, we have to go. You get caught in the circular loop of searching for an answer you may never get. And it is the epitome of holding you back. I encourage you, number one, this is not easy for you to do. I encourage you, please get some help with this because the minute you get some help with this and you could let go of your, this why around it all, you'll be free. You'll be free. You won't be a doormat anymore. You won't be looking at your life as something that was done to you. You'll be able to start to look at it and see the blessings and the gifts, even in horrific things, you know, even in abuse. You'll be able to see the things that have helped you become a strong woman. But in this show, in the time we have, certainly can't help you with it. I encourage you to go seek I mean, some help and get it, please. I, I do, and I get it. And, you know, I do have blessings in my life. I've had children I've done things that people haven't done in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are this blessings. is tough. This is tough. This is look at I know how tough this is. So all I'm trying to say to you is we don't have enough time to really help with you on this. I highly encourage you to get some outside help with somebody a professional that will be kind to you that will honor you and will help you walk this walk because you deserve it. Got that Wendy? With with COVID, that's an unlikely thing to happen anymore. I don't know. Oh I do God. teletherapy. I, I, but, I, I, I don't, every, every counselor that I know right now is doing in their state. It has to be in Pennsylvania, by the way, in your state. Yeah, Pennsylvania is just is so far, is so high in numbers and we're so like, so No, but you know, what I'm trying to medical. say is do me a favor, go research it online. That's your assignment. Because I, almost every counselor okay. I know is doing remote, whatever this is. What do we call this? Zooming. Yeah. Remote yeah. sessions. Tele meta tele sessions. I yeah, I can't Tell do one now because I'm out of state. So so please go do this. Mark, let's take a short break if we could. Jacob, give us a, a 60 second break if you Thanks, could, guys. and we'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you, you Wendy. Wendy. God bless. Yeah, everybody, welcome back. You're listening to Psychic and the Doc. That's me. And I'm here with the most amazing Mark Anthony, psychic medium, fantastic best-selling author, speaker. He's on like television. He's on radio. He's like, you know, in person now again, all of the above. Give him that website, Mark, would you? Yes, it's afterlifefrequency.com, just like my new book, The Afterlife Frequency. And Dr. Pat, we had a, a question from the chat. Somebody asked, how long does the soul hang around before it crosses to the other side? How long will it take for the person to come back and ready to share? If they are not settled wherever they are uh, supposed to go, can they come back and just make noises? Okay, first off, read my book, The Afterlife Frequency, and that will explain this. Souls don't hang around. They are pure electromagnetic energy, and they move at the speed of light. And yes, there are mediums who will disagree with me, but my book and my research is based on quantum physics and the latest and most dynamic studies in the field of afterlife research and survival of consciousness studies. And one of the reasons that I wrote the book is to get our understanding of spirit communication and mediumship out of the Victorian era and into 21st century science. So uh, there is no um, hanging around. They're not stuck between this side and the other side. Um, they can communicate immediately and they're never unsettled on the other side. We are, we're the ones that are miserable. So, yeah. and, and that is explained in great detail in my new book, The Afterlife Frequency. And I wanna thank you for, for the question. So- it's a great question. It is. It's a very good question. Yeah. That, that, in fact, that that's the type of question that prompted me uh, to write the book to help people understand. Because too many mediums are like, oh, they're wandering around. It's like, no, 
Let's get rid of that <laughs> nonsense and let's deal with what we're we're actually talking about, which is is the soul, the energy that makes us alive is part of the electromagnetic spectrum and it moves at the speed of light. So <laughs> they're out yeah. when they're dead, they're they're out and they transfer to the higher frequency, which I refer to as the afterlife frequency. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff is really good if you want to make uh paranormal 23, the movie. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there's this ghost hanging around. And it's like, really? Well, yeah, come on. Look, spirits are, are sentient and immortal living beings. And once they're out of the body, why do they want to hang around here? That's like saying, I would prefer to hang out in a garbage dump as opposed to going to a Swiss chalet. I mean, come on. All right. So. Oh, my gosh. I love that. Let's go, Jacob. It's all you. All right. <laughs> you've got Doris from Chicago. Hi there, Doris. Hey. Hi. hey, Doris. How are you? Welcome to the show. Happy Hi. Happy I have a question. I have a question, please. I, I'm watching on Facebook, and I'm also on the phone. Uh, on my phone, it's delayed. So I'm just asking Dr. Pat and Mark, can you hear me okay? And should I turn, my, should I turn the Facebook off? Absolutely. Just turn the sound down on your Facebook. Okay. I'm here. Yeah. As long yeah. as you can hear me, because I was listening to everything you said twice. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, social media. It's a pleasure. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. God forbid that social media ever wanted us to actually be instantaneously speaking. You think? <laughs> They're probably <laughs> like the speed of light, like Mark's book. <laughs> His fears are just zooming by. <laughs> Um, I would like, first of all, I have read your books, Mark, and fascinating. Sometimes I have to read them twice to count my brain to comprehend. I would like a reading from you, if at all possible, Mark, please. Sure. There's a male energy coming through connected to you. Now, this is interesting because he feels like he could be on your generational level. Now, it could be on the one above it, like the, the uh, father, uncle, or older friend, but he feels like he may be on your level. Okay, your generation. And what I'm getting with him is I'm getting this pain in my head. And it's different than um, when in the, the uh, previous uh, reading. This is like an expanding pain, pressure, fluid buildup uh, un under the skull. And this is coupled with this massive fluid buildup in the chest. Like, I can hear his voice being very, very raspy prior to passing. So um, major pressure in the head. I'm also feeling um, his lungs. And this could be pneumonia. This could be some type of lung disease. But it has. Um, uh, it feels very similar to congestive heart failure. Because congestive heart failure, lung disease, um, pneumonia, um, things like that have a very similar uh, sensation. Hold on, there's more. Now I'm getting this nauseated feeling in my stomach. Interesting. Nausea is an indicator that he was having difficulty eating and or holding down food prior to passing. But nausea sometimes is a cancer indicator. Doesn't always mean cancer, um, but it could. All right. So to recap, I've got a gentleman that feels like he's close to you generationally. And I'm getting this pressure buildup in the head and I'm getting fluid buildup in the chest. It does not feel to me that his passing was a quick event. It appears that he was ill for some time and um, he wasn't eating prior to passing. And there could be cancer overtones here um, based on the, the burning sensations that I'm getting throughout my body. Does any of this resonate with you? Possibly. Possibly. Possibly in what way? That um, I don't know all the details myself about my biological father, but I've heard some of these things that you are mentioning. I wasn't there to to be aware to say yes. I can only go um, secondhand. Were you about three when there was a separation from him with you? Because he keeps oh talking God. about... Three, oh, that, is, that, is that yes? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay, so this is him. Um, you probably heard me before if you watch the show when I say it, when a spirit gives me a message of an explanatory or advisory nature, which he gave um, the physical associations and, and uh, sensations with his death. 
And then when they follow it up with an objectively verifiable fact, you were three when he left, the verifiable yeah. fact of you being three is how the Spirit's letting you and I know that we've properly received and interpreted the message, okay? And um, interesting, um, do you have some type of, and you don't have to, to, to admit, you know, to, to uh, uh, medical conditions, but I feel like I want to scratch my arms and I feel like dry, flaky skin. And the reason that he's bringing this up is this appears to be some type of genetic issue, okay? It could be like a skin condition. Does any of this make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So he's coming through to let you know that this is a treatable condition. And he said, the last thing I want you to do, like he said, don't scratch and scratch and scratch and scratch till you like, you know, start, start uh, literally uh, pulling the skin or scratching the skin off of your arm. He said that you need to get this treated. And what's fascinating, he said um, also that if you start getting this itchy sensation, he said, get some bacon soda and water and rub it on your arms and your hands. And he said, that is like, um, will help. Now, I'm not a doctor. Um, Dr. Pat's a psychologist, but she's not a medical doctor. So when medical information comes through, this is what the spirit's transmitting. Make sure that you um, go to uh, your doctor and say, I'm having this issue. But the reason that your a biological father spirit is coming through to tell you this is because this is an inherited trait. He said also, he said, despite a lot of depressing things in your life you always seem to follow the sunshine mm. that's a nice thing yeah. okay so yeah it's apparently you have a sunshiny disposition mm -hmm. what do you think about that um i wish i could make his his belief true um not the last two years with all my losses but i hope to get there i hope to get mm. to see the sunshine um again yeah. Well, he gives me more, he gives me more um, than where I'm at yet, but that is my goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you are more than halfway there. Do you know why I say that? Mm -mm. Okay. Because you're already setting an intention to be there. Does that make sense? So just what you shared right now, let me tell you about the vibration of this medium that I do, right? These are energy waves in the airwaves. And what I want you to hold on to is your, your acclamation today, your declama declaration today that you want to get there, that you will get there. Because the minute we declare that for ourselves, that's why I, I was so stuck on stopping the word why earlier in the show. Because your declaration on, I will get there, Mark, I will get there, I have set the goal, I will get there, you have already built the momentum. And you know, I, I remember Esther Hicks saying once, what you can conceive, you can achieve. So I want to make sure you hold, I will get there in your consciousness. Is that okay? Will you do that? I'll try losing a grandchild is oh, it's um, tough. The, sun, the sunshine's not always there. No, there's no words I can even say to you about that, except that I'm so sorry. <clears throat> what, if I may, what I'm getting about the sunshine is you have to realize that he's letting you know that you're stronger than you're giving yourself credit for and losing the grandchild. Was this, was this a little girl? 20, she she had just turned 26. Okay. 26. I'm getting to me, I'm getting like girl, little girl. Okay. Um, girl. Um, he said that so many people are like turning to you. You're the mm. one. It, it's like wow. it, um it's like you're walking through waist deep water with all these chains on you. Okay, the water's the grief, the chains are all the people that are looking to you for support and comfort. And even though you don't realize it, you're the one that's pulling everybody through this. That's why no matter how bad it is, you're the one that sees the sunshine. 
And, and I know that that doesn't, you know, sound like, you know, for you or what's going on, but no, it this, is. Mark, this it is, is, yeah, this is what he wants you to know. So even though your biological dad was not part of your life, um, he is part of your life now. And your granddaughter is there with him. And she said that she has finally found this absolute serenity and joy. And, you know, what she also wants you to know is she said the way you always used to surprise her with little gifts. And she said, sometimes your gifts were just tiny little pearls of wisdom, but you always gave her something to aspire to and and i'm smelling lavender 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 and it could be the color or it could be the scent is there something with lavender that makes sense to you yes in what way yes, yes. oh we uh we do lavender baths <laughs> oh oh very Perfect. nice verifiable yeah. fact following the message nice. your granddaughter is here and she's with your biological dad She's in the light. She's found this joy and this peace. And mm -hmm. she wants to make sure. Okay. Is there a Debbie connected to you or her? Because I keep hearing like Debbie, Debbie. It's female D names, like a Debbie or Deidre, but Debbie. Not a, not a Debbie. No. Okay. Not make a, a note of that. Yeah. And you said not a Debbie. Not a, not a Debbie. Okay. No. Well, he, he said make a note of the letter D. I, I, write, I, I write everything that okay. you're saying. <laughs> everything All right, good. If you would see me, I would, you would see I'm writing, writing, writing. Okay. I can, I can see you writing from here. There from you Jersey. go. Right. From I New have to, I have to just quickly mark with what you just said. Thank you. Because I've taken a, um, a grief education class and yes. I've been talking to people in the, UK, New Zealand, Australia, everywhere. And they're calling me for me to witness their pain. And I've been there for them. So my God, that you said that. I'm trying. I'm trying to bring sunshine to others to witness mm -hmm. them and be there for them. Yes. I'm not yeah. doing that great job for myself, but I'm trying <laughs> to do that for others. Yes. Well, sometimes, and, and, and I know Dr. Pat can, can expand upon this, sometimes when we do, when we are suffering, performing an act of kindness for others is the best therapy. Yeah. It's yeah, healing it for is. us, too. Yeah. And let me just leave you with this. Uh, my history and my background and the people that I've lost to drugs and alcohol you would think that that would be the furthest group of people that I would ever want to surround myself with. And I will tell you to this day, I mentor and sponsor women in drug and alcohol addiction therapies and drug and alcohol recovery. And so, you know, even at the times where I'm thinking about why did my mom do that, right? You know, she was such a wonderful person why did she have to leave that way when I immerse myself into being of service of others? And, and that moment that you see that look in somebody else's eyes, right? When you hear their voice and their gratitude for what you're doing in service of them, so of them, there's nothing more powerful. The only thing I will say to you, and I have to say it to myself, so I'll say it to you and I'm going to say it to me. We have to put our own health first because we cannot help others. <laughs> yeah, I, I am too. I, I'm, t I'm a work in progress. I, I'm giving you a lot of advice, but trust me, I have to work at it too. Um, right. But you're aware of it. You're of service. And even on my best days, it doesn't take the loss and pain away. We have to go through the right. cycle. Especially if a child. Every oh loss God. is real. Oh, yeah. Every yeah. single yeah, loss exactly. is real. Yeah, exactly. Well, wow. thank you for sharing these stories. They're so thank personal. Thank you so much, my doctor. Oh, doctor I can't even speak. <laughs> that's okay. Ken we get Mark. it. That's Do okay. We we understand. Thank you Do for Do calling. You know that, that father, by the way, was in Auschwitz. Oh wow! The man okay. that you were in reference to. So I'm a child of a of a survivor. He lost everybody. Oh my there, gosh! So oh my thank gosh! Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you so much. 
Thank you for calling in. And and, and a peaceful new year to you both. Thank you. I'm working on that one. Thank you so much. (laughs) Okay, thank you. Thank you. You can call me Dr. Pat. I'll listen. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I might take her up on that. I'm going to have to get her phone number. Oh, my gosh. Thank thank you you. very much. Thank Thank you. you. Uh, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How inspirational, Mark. I mean, talk about a day where we're talking about epiphany. Wow. And, you know, um, she, she really is, is pulling people through the hardest of times in spite of her own difficulty. Yeah. I mean, wow, what, what an inspiration to all of us. Yeah, I have to tell you, Mark, from, uh, and we don't talk about this enough on the show, but when you are someone that has experienced a trauma of like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. A similar trauma. And you sign up like she has to be in service of others. The magnitude of the psychological shock waves. You know what I mean? Sure. The after effects, the triggers, the strength that she must have to do that. I can't even imagine it. I know how tough it is for me to look in the eyes of another addict and alcoholic and just see my past, my history, my own drug and alcohol abuse, and yet be able to give them guidance and be there compassionately for them. What a powerful show, Mark. What do you think? I I think this was the quintessential epiphany show. And it was an honor, um, first off, to work with you, yeah. Dr. Pat. And secondly, it was an honor to facilitate connections for, for the callers. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. And humbled. I want to say something, and Mark, maybe you can add to this in the minute we have left. Everybody that called him, Wendy, and I hope you're still listening. There's nothing wrong with the place that you are right now. Right. There's nothing wrong <clears throat> with you asking the question of why. It is so difficult not to ask the question of why. What I'm talking to the people about, and so are you, Mark, is we want to give you an invitation to another option. But that doesn't mean that what we're saying is a right thing and where you are is a wrong thing. It's absolutely not in our consciousness and what Mark does and what I do. Spirit energy and the energy of this show, we're honoring every single one of you where you are. Everyone that called in, everybody that's listening, where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be right now. Our job is to help you if you want to rise up. Right, Mark, what do you think? Absolutely. And, you know, next week's guest is somebody who works very hard to help people rise up. A good friend to us and to the show, Janice Short who is the founder and editor-in-chief of Best Holistic Life magazine. And she's going to come in and talk to us about how we change the world one person at a time. I love it. Mark Anthony, I'm Dr. Pat. You're listening to The Psychic and the Doc. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, anybody else that was answering the phones. And most importantly, thank you to all of you that has so courageously called in Believe me, you have touched tens of thousands of lives by doing that today. All of you are very special. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to The Psychic in the Dark with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat Basile, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife. Extraordinary problems? Yeah, they do. They require extraordinary solutions. But step into the world of possibilities with us on The Psychic and the Doc. That's every Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. That's TransformationTalkRadio.com. And don't forget, we're also live face-to-face on Facebook.com, Transformation Talk Radio.